All right, we're out here enjoying this sun off this lake. A little vitamin D is something we needed. We just had a Turkish coffee, but I had to have some of the local beer. And so this is domestic brewed right here in Montenegro, Nicosico. All right, give it a taste. Tastes like beer. Tastes like beer. <laughs> so Kurt has moved on to beer. I'm still on coffee, don't worry. But we are in the town of Reason, R-I-S-A-N. And we're going to take you and show you a few things in this town. But a little sneak peek is this town is old. Not just 1200s or 1300s old like we've been seeing. This town dates back to 400 B.C. And we're going to show you some artifacts from the 200s, guys. This is a really cool town, sitting on the edge of this beautiful bay of Kotor. So, let's get to it. Snow has told you that this town has some really old history. But to be honest, We've been fascinated with all the history since we started traveling Europe a few months ago in our van. And it's really got both of us to thinking, where did our families come from? That's why we're so excited to be partnering with MyHeritage to track down our family trees. MyHeritage is the sponsor of today's video. They have over 19 billion documents on their site to help you find records of your family. First thing I did was set up my account on MyHeritage.com and entered some basic information on my parents, my grandparents, and my siblings. Then I started getting all kinds of notification called Instant Discoveries. That will let you add an entire branch to your family tree. It was really easy and really quick getting started. Now I was really interested in tracing my first ancestors that came to the U.S. and where they came from. In no time, I found John Fowler Sr., born in 1747 and died in 1845. He was a soldier in the Revolutionary War. I could even see a picture of his gravestone with his position in the military. And then I got a matching record, and it had his father's name on it. And so I continued to trace the father's father's up for about six more generations following the matching records and the instant discoveries and there it was William Fowler born in 1606 in Derby England and died in 1660 in New Haven Connecticut I was pretty excited I called my mom and she was able to confirm enough of the research to know I was on the right trail and she was even able to send me some awesome old-timey pics of my ancestors. Speaking of pictures, I was able to find some in my research and using the My Heritage tool, I was able to enhance and even animate some of the photos. Now, if you guys know me, I had to keep going. And within a short time, several generations up, I traced to Henry the Fowler. After some quick research, I learned Henry the Fowler, my direct ancestor and part of my heritage, 29 generations my senior, was the king of East Francia from 919 until his death in 936. Of course, we searched the Google map and found some of the historical sites from the era of his reign that are still standing in modern day Germany. They are now on my bucket list, and we will be visiting these sites in our van. Tracking down my heritage has been more meaningful to me than I would have ever imagined, and I'm not done with instant discoveries. Now, you guys can get your own My Heritage account too, and get started with a 14-day free trial. The link is in the video description, and be sure to let us know how far back you were able to trace your family. So I got up, it's Sunday morning, to walk around and maybe see if this town little didn't have a little 
Sunday morning market and as I walked up through the hills I saw obviously the stone villages you guys know I love that and there are a lot of ruins here and one nice thing about seeing old structures in this state is you can see in them because the windows are off the shutters are off the doors are off and even though a lot of times the floors have decayed and rotted so you can't see all those you can still kind of see the overall structure what the walls are made of and all that type of stuff and it's just really fascinating but as you look up in here you can see how wide how thick those walls are I'm guessing that's 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 almost um well it's not a meter thick maybe two-thirds of a meter two feet thick maybe but look at this you can just see up in here and you can see when you look at these places just the years that they've been fixed up and rehabbed because you get different kinds of stones some are really more just rough cut and then some you can see are actually formed so anyway i'm enjoying my walk this morning it's a bit crisp but another thing i've noticed about montenegro as well as croatia and really we started seeing in italy is these are cat countries and we have seen cats all over beautiful cats all over these villages she's jealous because these are free walkers but to be fair guys we do hear them fighting in the alleys in any event it's lovely seeing the cats as we walk around these old stone villages and i assure you you know you might be thinking well you guys have seen a lot of these this one is different this one's unique as a lot of them are but this has some special touches i can't wait till me and snow get a chance to get out here and properly explore this and show this to you guys but right now i'm going to go on down to the market and pick out a little veg Uh, how much is this? The problem? How much? No, how quanto questo? How much does it cost? Quanto uh, euros? How many euros? All right, I'm here at the market. I scored me some good red peppers. I got me some onions, and I got me some of this cured meat. Not a must. So from a view, this is a beautiful, 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 stunning parking spot. And there are some cars, as you can see, coming and going. We're not far from the main road, although we're not right on it. But it kind of ends right here with this little coffee shop down here where we had coffee and a beer the other day. But believe it or not, for all the traffic, and there are a lot of cars coming and going, it really is a nice little spot to walk the kitties. Now, it's not ideal, but there are a couple strips of grass, and there's a little quietness over here by the waterfront, which is not their favorite. But the sun is shining, and they always love the sunshine, and they always love a walk. And so, it ain't too bad. Closed. It's not open today. Well, our plans for today just abruptly changed. <laughs> we, uh, we've chilled here for a couple of days and the whole time we've been planning on today, which is a Monday, walking over and seeing the really cool feature of this town. But it's closed on Mondays. But that's not such a bad thing because we were kind of up in the air on whether we'd stay here one more night or not. And now, yes, we will stay one more night and we'll be there first thing in the morning when they open and then we'll head out. So that means we're still gonna see the really, really, really cool old feature that this town has. We're just gonna see it tomorrow. And now today, we're gonna go walk through town. It's supposed to be a cool old street and some churches, maybe a coffee or lunch or something. Who knows, let's see what the day has in store. So we've learned that on this journey in the more touristy cities, 
the churches are open and sometimes even charge a fee and you have to have reservations to go in. But sometimes in these rural areas, we're only going to get to show you the outsides of these churches because they're just not set up for tourist traffic. But this is a really pretty church. Kurt took a peek inside through the window, said it's really ornate too. So, but the clock tower is magnificent. So we left the church, walked a couple of hundred feet, took a turn by a restaurant and stumbled onto this amazing, incredibly cool road that uh, has cool square blocked sidewalks. But the road itself is made with round stones with a little design of some sort of long skinny looking one. And it is a fascinating road surrounded by these old buildings and uh yeah these are the kind of things that it's cool to find on the roads less traveled and i would say this one is less traveled gabella street one of the oldest streets in montenegro dating back to the 1400s when the venetian empire started to rule this area now the name comes from the italian word gabella which means tax or duty. At the very beginning of the street, where the market square that Kurt visited earlier is, there used to be a customs post, which collected taxes on any imported goods, which was mostly salt at the time. Now today, there is no sign of the customs house. It vanished centuries ago. But as you saw, the market is still active on weekends, 600 years later. Now, unfortunately, this area suffered an earthquake in 1979. And many of these old buildings from the 1400s and 1500s that line this old street were damaged and have not been restored. But it is still a sight to see, guys. We are walking on the streets where taxes were collected 600 years ago. <laughs> There's some ruins there. And in that middle window, there's two pigeons. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but it's like they're posing for the camera. And as we pan down, you'll see proof that people actually do drive on this road. It's not just a pedestrian road. I didn't know Kurt has already showed y'all some of the cool brickwork and how it displays the history of this town. But check out these shutters and these doors. And I can't get over this road. It's beautiful. In the town on the hill Where the apples grow And the church bells ring Every hour or so I took a little walk Just to see the ships coming in Sun rose up right above the highway. Black, blue, red, yellow, golden skyway. It's like the day that you jump into the wind. I can't go back down to that water. So a little secret, Kurt slept in very late this morning, which is unusual, but uh, he had a relaxing morning and he had a very late breakfast. So I think he's gonna get just a snack, but I'm gonna full on get lunch cause I'm hungry. And we're at a little place called Hypnos. And Hypnos is the Greek God of sleep. Luckily for us, they've got English on this menu. And I'm, I'm conflicted between the bacon-wrapped Montenegrin kebab or the barbecue sausages. I'm gonna add some french fries to the side because I know Kurt will want to try a few of those, whether he's hungry or not. I might have me some Nutella pancakes. <laughs> oh, they have that? <laughs> oh. So it's been a long time since we saw lemonade on the menu. Kurt, you want to give it a taste? Mm. 
Ah, fresh squeeze. This is made with lemons, not limes. Do they sweeten it up a little? They sweeten it a little bit, uh, but it's not super sweet, which no. is good for me. I'm I don't probably like going to like sweet. it. <laughs> That's really good. Kurt went from not being hungry to getting tiny fried. Smelt. Are they little good? fish bone in. Oh. Yeah. I'm not trying that. Good. Whole fish. You guys know I like a whole fried fish. I got a bunch of them. <laughs> Those taste like Slim Jims. <laughs> Slim Jims, salty wieners. They're so good. Come on. Nice quick lunch in this beautiful little town. I think Kurt really liked his little smelts. <laughs> now we're headed back to the van. Well, we'll probably do some editing while we hang out here for a little bit longer so we can take y'all to the museum tomorrow morning that was closed today but a nice, relaxing, cool vibe little town on this beautiful bay of Kotor. We both got a little bit of editing done yesterday afternoon, had a good night's rest on this beautiful, beautiful bay. It is now Tuesday and hopefully the museum we really want to show you in this town is open today. Let's go see. All right, we got bummer, bummer news. I was really excited to show y'all what was in here. We even stayed a whole extra day. Ah, oh, it's still closed, guys. It was supposed to be open today according to the hours on the door and the Google hours. So we're not gonna get to see it. But what's in there is this is actually a really, really, really old villa that they turned into the museum. And inside there are many rooms and they believe that a very, very powerful, wealthy Roman general uh, used to use this as a vacation home. And in each room he had the floor exquisitely decorated with mosaics. A different style in each room and these were discovered I think I'm pretty sure in the early 1900s when someone bought this villa and was going to restore it and was scraping up the old floors so imagine you buy an old house in the States and you pull up the carpet and then pull up the linoleum and then ta-da there's amazing wood floors except for here they pulled up the floors and there was amazing Roman mosaic floor art dating back to like the years 200. Uh, I really wanted to walk around there and see that. And I'm so sorry we can't show it to you. Oh, the history of this part of the world is amazing. But we're gonna grab a few groceries and leave this little town without seeing the mosaics. Our Lady of the Rocks, a church built on an island in the Bay of Kotor. Yes, it's beautiful, and it's cool that you can only get to it by boat. But the legend of how it came to be is what's truly fascinating. You see, this is a man-made island. Apparently, there was an ancient sighting of Madonna and Child on the rocks after a shipwreck near here. And that caused the local seamen to take an oath that after each successful voyage, they would throw a rock into the sea in the same location of the shipwreck. Now this was a popular trade route, so there were a lot of ships and a lot of seamen that came through here. It did not take long until an island started to appear. And even today, the custom of throwing rocks into the sea here is alive and well. Every July 22nd, local residents take their boats out and throw more rocks into the sea. So this island continues to grow. 
Now the church was built in 1630 in honor of Madonna and Child, with some major renovations in 1722. You can take a boat to the island from the city of Parast. There's also a small museum on the island next to the church. But we're headed out of this area, so we're going to skip the boat tour this go-round. We have left our little town. We've drove by the cool little church out on the island. We're circling around this entire bay of Kotor, and now we are actually headed to the city of Kotor, which is on the southwest side of this bay. But before we get there, we have run into a dilemma. All campsites in this area are just closed up tight for the winter, and we need water. And where we were parking at in uh, Reason, there was supposed to be a water source, but it was out of order. So now we are stopping at restaurants and gas stations, desperately looking for water because we don't need to get into the big city of Kotor and have to look for water there. That would be bad. So we found a restaurant here right on the water's edge that looks open and there is a giant water hose sitting out front. Kurt has walked over to try to work his magic. I don't think it's okay to drink. He said we can have something at the restaurant, but obviously we need to fill our tank. Yeah, so. all right, so we'll keep looking. As we drive through here, looking for somewhere to possibly ask for some water, you can see every once in a while there's somewhere to pull off and park, but it's just a little too tight for us just to stop at any of these places and look for hose bibs. So we're kind of just hoping to get lucky, keeping an eye out for a bigger parking lot of some sort of business, being able to pull in and hope they got a hose bib. Now every once in a while we get a glimpse of the bay and we are definitely in an area where they farm mussels and clams and oysters. And you can see a lot of little docks along the water that in the summertime, I imagine are pop up oyster bars. So it's a beautiful little area, but the only thing on our mind right now is finding some water. No hose bibs. Let's check this side of the building. No, nothing. We went by our planned parking spot here in the city no water source there. We've cruised up and down a couple of the little streets in that area. We found a gas station. The guy was very nice and said he didn't know anywhere to get water. We're going to head out of town a little bit on the other side of Kotor and just see if we can find anything. But uh, we need water. We need water. <laughs> we got a little excited. We found a hose bib underneath a sign that said water in their language, of course. Voda. But, Voda, that's water. But it didn't work. Kurt went inside, the guy at the gas station was very nice. He said, theirs is broken, try the gas station down the road. And he said the gas stations were probably gonna be our best bet and there's three or four within a couple of miles here. So we're gonna go hit all the gas stations. Yeah, and one of the challenges is uh, a lot of people in this region don't speak English, which obviously that's not their native language. But mostly in Europe, we've been able to find places where people speak English. And there are certainly some here, but it's not as prevalent. So we're looking for Voda. V-O-D-A. Is that how you spell it? Voda. Voda. What do you think? We can put a couple of capfuls of bleach. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So we found water. We found water. We're gonna go back to our old Central America routine. Hit the unlock button. All I right. did already. Right. And uh, we're gonna go back to our old Central America routine, add a couple of capfuls of bleach to each tank, let it swish around. We feel pretty good about it, but that's just an extra precaution. Woohoo! We found water! A leaky hose bib never looked so good, guys. It even came with a long hose, so we don't have to pull out our hose. 
Here's this carrot for a couple of catfuls in there. Woohoo! High five! <laughs> Just like that, we are back in business. All the tanks are full, including the shower tank. We are good to go. We got about a five minute drive back to our campsite. So we've made it to our campsite. And in the next video, we're going to be taking you to see the city of KOTOR, which is supposed to be epic. But Kurt could not wait to get back on the computer back here and start chasing down more of his ancestors on my heritage. So don't forget, head over there to their website. The link is in the video description. You can get started with your 14 day free trial and be sure to let us know any cool ancestors you find. With that, we're going to see you guys in a few days from the city of KOTOR here in Montenegro. Cheers! If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!